every breath that I take, every moment I'm awake, Lord, have your way in me. Hallelujah. Can we praise the Lord? Lord, have your way in me. That's what we all desire tonight, that the Lord would have his way in me. And as we reach out to the Lord and desire that the Lord just have his way, we just pray and say, Lord, here I am, that I will have your way. And to God be the glory. I must greet you all tonight in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Thank Pastor John for this opportunity that I can <clears throat> here to speak to you with you tonight. I'm also thankful for the many blessings that the Lord uh, has been bestowing on us daily as we go along and all the things that we see happening around us. We just keep praising the Lord because when we look what is happening and listening everyday news and all of that, a lot of the news is not good news, but thank God for God's children, he's always with us. And for that, I rejoice greatly in the goodness of his love. So, so we're so thankful to hear um, our minister this morning, I listen to him weekly in a quick study. And really, he's, uh, I enjoy the quick study uh, program so much and with many others. But I'm thankful for the many, many blessings of the Lord. I'm so glad for the years of service uh, that I come to know the Lord and rejoice in praising him. This past week, as I was listening to um, a special with uh, Billy Graham and... Uh, as I was listening, the speaking of some of his years back when he started and uh, all his ministry with George Beverly Shade and thing. And I remember the first year when he came to Jamaica, 1958. And uh, that was one, that year I walked down that altar and I give my heart to the Lord. Before that uh, time, I grew up in the church since age 10. I remember age 10, 11, testifying and all of this and uh, been in the church. But that real commitment was in 1958. That was the first uh, time. And as they were talking this, this, this past week, reflecting, I, I felt so good that uh, he is still standing for the Lord. Amen. And uh, so many uh, talk about all the many blessings of the goodness of God. Thank the Lord. Tonight I would like to draw your attention to the word of God. And uh, as I listened, Pastor Brian was speaking last Sunday morning. And he began to quote a few uh, scriptures and make mention in a few areas, I said, I wonder where is he going? <laughs> and then, of course, Sunday evening, Pastor John quote, began to quote a few of the scriptures. But then I began to think to myself, we don't have another Bible. And we can't find another one, so we got to stick to it. So we all will be saying sometimes the same things. Amen. The word of God. I'd like for you to turn with me to Genesis chapter 3. I'll be reading from verse 8. Just Genesis 3 verse 8. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord among the trees of the garden. We go to chapter 4 in verse 1. And Adam knew his wife, 
and she conceived, and he bared Cain. And she said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. Verse 16, and Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwell in the land of Nod on the east of Eden. Now, the presence of the Lord was always in the garden with Adam and Eve. But at this present time, Eve, whom they had fellowship time and again and daily fellowship with the Lord, it was a time... If you would just imagine being in fellowship with the Lord. Sometimes as we go along daily, and when we think of our fellowship, we feel so good. And we just want to be in communication with him always. So now the presence of God was there always with them in the garden. For it was there they felt the sweet communication, the the daily communication with him. And they were never alone. Never, never alone. Because God was always with them. For this is all that they really need. And that's all we will ever need. Is to be in the presence of the Lord. But there could never be a sweeter devotion. There could never be a sweeter devotion in your time, in my time. Or ever. Than that of the presence of the Lord. That one day, she went strolling. And she came in contact with the serpent. A voice which she never heard before. Never heard before. And from that conversation, she became distracted. Distraction can really cost you a lot. When you, if we think of the constant reminder, don't drive and text or try to answer the phone, or if it's ringing, don't reach over to look for it because you became distracted. Distraction can cost you a lot of problem. And so she became distracted, listening to a voice, What voice is this? Never heard before, but take time to listen to the voice. And from that distraction, she realized that it was not the same. But pay little attention to it. And therefore, it led her into deceit. And as it led her into deceit, it also caused her to bring her husband into the same trap with her. And as she found herself in that way, next thing you know, her husband fall into the same trap as her. They found something else that They've never seen before. They found themselves naked in the presence of the Lord. They became naked. They became shame. And they d- didn't know what to do. And one, someone told me sometimes, when you don't know what to do, or when an object doesn't know what to do, like a computer, when a computer doesn't know what to do, they do all kind of crazy things. And so at this time, they found themselves in a situation that they said, let's get away from here. Let's hide ourselves. Let's hide ourselves. Remember where they said they're hiding themselves? From the presence of the Lord. So they think. 
And they heard the voice of the Lord walking in the garden. And instead of running to him, they ran from him. That's a dangerous thing to do, running from the presence of the Lord. There's a chorus that you always sing, running away, a fugitive from God. And so as they run from him, they realize that it's just a thought in their mind, which is God will find them. And I'm reminded of that running away from him. An incident sometimes, I was at work some years ago when the kids were small, and I got a call from my wife at home that there was fire in the house. By the time I get there, the firemen had put it out. But what had happened, my little boy, Aston Jr., and my Little girl, last child, Dahlia, they were playing with the ruler and put it into the toaster and start the fire. My wife was in the room sleeping because she worked in the, it was working the night shift, so she was sleeping. But when the place catch a fire, instead of running to mommy, they run from her. Just as Adam and Eve did. And so the smoke wake her up. And she was able to find them. Run to them. And find them. While Adam and Eve tried to run away. God knew where they were. And he would find them. Had it been that God didn't find Adam. They would be lost forever. Forever. But God have a second chance. And to God be the glory. And so it was with Adam and Eve. As they hid themselves on the presence of the Lord. They think they did. But in Psalm 139 and verse 7. Tells us. It's asked. Where? Shall I flee from the presence of the Lord? Where shall I go from thy spirit? There's nowhere that we can go. David realized that. He said, Lord, you have searched me. And I'm amazed to understand that there is no way that I can hide from your presence. My conclusion is that if I make my bed in hell, you find me. Anywhere you find me, where shall I go? And so, as Adam and Eve heard the voice of the Lord walking in the garden, the thunderous voice, the breeze, a moment which they never felt before, an atmosphere which they've never been in before. Where art thou? And their answer was, I've heard thy voice. You know, the entire atmosphere, everything was different. It was not like that calm moment which they enjoy time and again with the Lord. It it didn't feel that way. It was a complete uh, different moment. What is happening? What's, What's wrong? It's a... Lord, we heard your voice that we were naked and we went and hide ourselves. Who told you, God asked them, that you were naked? Come to ask, have you disobeyed? Have you done what I told you not to do? They were terrified. They came to a time in your life that they became terrified. Hebrew 10, 31 tells us, it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God. One translation, it says, it's a terrifying thing to fall into the hands 
of a living God. That's what happened. How terrified they were. They realized that they have lost that moment of fellowship and joy that they had before. And so it was fearful. To fall into the hand of a living God instead of being in fellowship with him. A blast that moment of fellowship. This was not what happened yesterday on the days before and all the other time that we meet with the Lord. We had fellowship. We had a good time. Why am I now hiding? Why? What happened? And so because of that death Pass upon all men. Because God asked, God told them, asked them. Have you eaten of the tree of knowledge that I told you not to? Good and evil. I told, God told them that in the day that they eat of it, they shall die. Not may die, but shall die. And now this happened. And 1 Corinthians 15, 22 tells us, For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Adam died, and the sentence of death has passed upon all his children, upon all his family, upon the world. But thanks be to God, There is a chance for mankind today because Christ Jesus came to deliver us from that death, from that stench, from that hopeless moment and give us a second chance. Therefore, in John 10 and 10, it says, Jesus said, I am come that you might have life And have it more abundantly. Chapter 14 and verse 1 says, Let not your heart be troubled or be terrified. When we listen to what happened or what could have happened. But Jesus says, let not your heart be troubled. He gave us that hope and that joy that we can turn to. Chapter 15, he said, I am the true vine and my father is the husband man. He give us that moment of rejoicing. He give us that moment of hope where we can turn to and have a new, amen, feeling and looking into understanding that he will come to us. He will forgive us. We will have a new chance in him. The approach of the tempter was Almost in the same manner to Eve as it was to Christ. Genesis 3 and 6, she saw that the tree was good for food. The lust of the flesh. And that it was pleasant to the eyes. The lust of the eyes. And the tree... To be desired and to make one wise the pride of life. She took of the fruit thereof and ate and gave it unto her husband with her. And he did eat. And their eyes, both of them, were open and they discovered that they were naked. Jesus in the wilderness and his temptation. And when the tempter came to him, Matthew 4, verse 3 to 11. When the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command these stones to be made bread. But Jesus answered and said unto him, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word proceedeth out of the mouth. Of God. Then. 
he took him to the pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands shall they bear thee up, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Jesus said unto him, It is written, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. That's the temptation that Eve could not overcome. But Jesus said, It is written. You see, the serpent used the written word to console Jesus. But Jesus knew that the serpent didn't, didn't write the word. So how can he really use the word in the right manner? And again, the devil took him up into the exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdom of the world and the glory of them and said unto him, All these things I will give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Jesus said unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Him only shalt thou serve. Jesus knew the word. Satan could not maneuver the word. Satan could not have the upper hand of Jesus because the word he quote to Jesus, Jesus again give him the word. It is written. Then the devil leave at him. And this is what I always rejoice over. Then the devil leave at him. And behold, angels came and minister to him. Just when you're empty, just when you believe you can't make it, there is help on the way. Amen. And so the, the angel came and ministered unto him. Sometimes you believe, well, that's the end of it. Sometimes somebody believed that, oh, it's all over for him. We look at Daniel when he was in the den of lions. Not in the lion's den, but in a den of lions. You see, it's different. One thing you can say, what's that place? And said, so it's a lion's den. But when, in, when is a lion den and lion is in it, it's a den of lions. Amen. So he wasn't just in a lion's den, but he was in a den of lions. Glory to God. But Daniel said, when the king come calling and wondering if he's still there, Daniel said, my God had sent an angel, the angel of the Lord, glory to God, and had shut the lion's mouth, and they have not hurt me. Glory to God. The angel of the Lord encampeth around them that fear him. Psalms 91 verse 11. For he shall give his angel charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. His angel will keep us in all our ways. When Paul was in struggle and, and he was shipwrecked, when it seems that everything was going a different way. And all the men with him became nervous. Paul said, there stood by me this night, in Acts 27, 23, there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am. Amen. Amen. The angel of God, whose I am, and whom I serve, saying, for saying, Fear not, Paul. You ever been at a time when you hear the Lord talking to you? But Paul. Paul said, this night, the angel of the Lord, whose I am. I am a servant of the Lord. And these angels are of the Lord. They said, 
Fear not. And for that, Paul rose up and he says, none. No lives will be lost. Praise God. Took the fear off all those that were within him. Reminding them that no lives will be lost. Adam. The first Adam. Bring forth death to us. Hopelessness. And it seemed that there was no way out. But let's take a look at the first Adam. And the last Adam. Someone mentioned to it as the first and the second Adam. This quote mentioned to the first Adam and the last Adam. The first Adam was a son of God. Luke mentioned this in the generation of Jesus. And in the last verse of Luke 3, verse 38, where he speaks of the genealogy of the children of Adam, the father of Cain, the son of God. Or Cain, the son of Adam, the father of God. So mention here that Adam was the son of God, according to genealogy. He was created by God. God knew all about him. Amen? But the last Adam, the only begotten son of God, for God so loved the world, John 3, 16, that he gave his only begotten son. So when we look at it and we say, Adam, the son of God, according to Luke 3, 38, and then we speak of the only begotten son. But Jesus was from the beginning. And thank God, there's a mystery that we can understand. But thank God for his glory and his goodness. Death reigned from Adam to Moses. Romans 5 verse 14. From Adam to Moses, death reigned. But the first, the last Adam, Christ... Christ brought eternal life. 1 Corinthians 15 and 45. And we are so glad for eternal life. Without eternal life, we wouldn't be here today. We wouldn't be here. The human race became sinners because of Adam's disobedience. Romans Five and 19. But the human race could become righteous because of the obedience of the second Adam, which is also in Romans 5 19. The first Adam was made a living soul, he could die. Because he was mortal. 1 Corinthians 15 and 45. And the last Adam was made quickened. It was a quickening spirit. Praise the Lord. Life-giving spirit. 1 Corinthians 15 and 45. So we are so thankful that in spite of lost and undone. In spite of hopelessness. The last Adam bring forth joy, bring forth happiness. We sing, I was lost and undone without God and his son. And he reached down his hands for me. I'm so thankful that he reached down his hand. I'm so glad that he pulled me out 
of Mary clay. In Ephesians, he tell us how we have been redeemed. We were redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. We, we had no hope. When there was no hope, he purchased us with his, with his blood. And for that today, we can rejoice. We can rejoice. That old man, Adam, is dead. But when we look back at Seth, as we read in chapter 4 and verse 1 there of Genesis, and Adam knew his wife Eve, and she conceived and bare Cain, and Cain said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. Whatever reason, she seems to have a moment of rejoicing and feel good about. I've gotten a man from the Lord. Whether to fight her battle, whether that she can feel good. But I can tell you one thing, that Cain was not the promise. He was not the promised son to deliver you and I. Then we look at verse 16. And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord. When you look at it, this is the first family that created. Eve, Adam and Eve, that went out from the presence of the Lord. Tried to hide from the presence of the Lord. And here comes Cain who she feels so good and rejoice about. And probably want to have so much to talk about him. But Cain, who slew his brother, Abel, came up with so much hate in his heart. And discontentment within himself. That he slew his brother. And when the Lord says, Cain, where is thy brother? I don't know. I'm not my brother's keeper. And try to deny the fact that he slew his brother. And therefore he was driven away. And as he went away, he became nervous and began to wonder. Now I'm gone. I have to be leaving away. Somebody, they're going to find me and kill me. But instead of realizing that he's gone as a vagabond and away, the Lord promised that whosoever killeth you, vengeance is mine, said the Lord. Vengeance is mine. And so regardless of what happened, the plan of God will accomplish. And I'm so thankful today for the God to whom we serve, a God of love, a God who will always forgive. He will always forgive. He saw us in our needs. He looked beyond our needs. He looked beyond all the faults that we have. And when there was no way, he make a way. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. When we think, when we hear today, when we hear of the name Adam and Eve, we don't want them, we don't want to be associated with the father who abandoned us by the way. But we want to rejoice and say thanks to Calvary. Thanks for the blood of the lamb. No one walk around and say thank God. I'm a daughter or I'm a son of Adam and Eve. Nobody rejoice about that. But when we come to the place of understanding who we are in Christ. We give him thanks for the grace that bringeth salvation to all men. Because Eve went from the presence of the Lord. And her son to whom she glory in and thank God that she received a man from God. Also went from the presence of the Lord. Let us stay where we are in him. In him. On the, his anointing. And realizing that. We are, we're not, 
we, it's not a scheme that we built up that we said, you know what happened? We have lost it all. And what can we do to make up for it? So let's get to our father or let's get to our granduncle and all the rest of it. See if we can put together some type of uh, funds to see if we can buy back what we have lost. A lot of people who, when they lost their position, a house, a car or something, something like that, they would put together to try to redeem it. But nothing could redeem you and I but the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. Nothing could redeem us. No matter how we have that uncle, no matter how we have that mother who would go all out and to say, boy, you can't stay there. Girl, I got to do something to help you. But none could redeem us when nothing else could help. Love lifted me. Love lifted me. We're all in danger. And he causes us to look up. Look up. There is redemption. There is hope. We're in danger. But love lifted me. That's why we are here today. That's why we're here today. Because Adam walked away. Eve walked away. They went to hiding. But praise God. When the soldiers came to the garden and inquired, Jesus said, whom seek ye? He did not go hiding. When they said, Jesus of Nazareth, he said, I am he. In their doubts, and they couldn't believe such a nice, good-looking fellow could be the one we're looking for. And so Jesus asked again, whom seek ye? He said, Jesus of Nazareth. He says, Again, I said, I am he. If you then seek me, let these go. None of the disciples, none of his inner circle could help, could do anything for us but Jesus himself. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. So Jesus said, if you seek me, here I am, let these go. Peter believed that he could help Jesus. So he drew the sword to take off the ears of one of the high priests. But Jesus said, Peter, put up your sword. Put up your sword. You're not helping yourself. We find that before this whole ordeal over for that weekend, Peter was in denial. I know not the man. I know not the man. And Jesus is still saying, if you seek me, let these go. Praise God. Thanks to Calvary. Thanks for the blood of Jesus Christ. Thanks for he stood up to the very end. Whatever it is that we need from the Lord, we need to remember that while we were down, we were forgotten, we had no hope. Love lifted me. That's why we're here today. The scripture reminds us, not of works, lest any man should boast. Not of works. I can't go and tell anybody that thank God I have a father or I have a, I have a mother who you do me what you want or you say what you want. My mother will pay for it. Not in, not in this, our salvation. The blood of Jesus ransomed me. Paid for you. Paid for me. Set me free. Set you free. When I look at you and it says, what caused you to be rejoicing? The blood of Jesus. 
What caused me to be rejoicing? The blood of Jesus. What make you so happy? The blood of Jesus. He set me free. Love lifted me. And you can look back at me and say, me too. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. It's something about what lift you and I from the dust. It's the blood of Jesus Christ. Praise God. Adam became afraid. And instead of running to God, instead of saying, God, my communication, my fellowship, my devotion this morning is not what it should be. What's happening? Instead of standing up and trying to find out, Lord, I need to have a devotion as usual, but something is happening. They run and hide themselves. Just like those two children run under the bed to hide while the fire is burning. But he rescued me. Jesus rescued you and I. That's why today we can have such joy, such hope, wonderful peace, knowing that in the will of God, all is well. Only in the will of God. And I'm happy. I am glad. I'm free. I had a sister who many years ago, she used, when I was very small, I remember she used to sing, I'm but a pilgrim stranger as I journey here below. A citizen of heaven, I'm so happy as I go. The world might think me poor and pass me by with scornful hands. But they don't know I have treasures on the other side. And so you wonder why I'm so happy in the things of which I boast. By saying goodbye to the world and things that charm me most. But I've got a vision from the Lord who for me bled and died. And that's my greatest treasures on the other side. Let's store up the great treasures. Let's work to have that great treasure on the other side. Praise God. There got to be something awaiting us. I've got a vision from the Lord who for me bled and died. I've heard his voice said, fear not. I will pilot thee. I've heard a voice That says, come out from among them and be separated. And I'll be a father unto you. And you shall be my sons and my daughter. And if we heard that voice calling us to come closer to him. That voice is always calling, come closer. Come closer. In every one of our prayers and devotion. It should be a time of saying, Lord, help me to feel your presence. Glory to God. Not running from from the presence of the Lord, but feeling his presence. I must have the Savior with me, for I dare not walk alone. I must feel his presence near me and his arms around me thrown. And then we can truly say, and he walked with me and he talks with me. Can we really say that with that true assurance? And then Paul says, let us draw nigh with a full assurance. That that full assurance that we are walking in his presence, we are coming closer to him, feeling the love of God and understanding his divine blessing. He calls us with a holy calling. And wherever we are, we represent Christ. We represent Christ and we need to represent him well. Many of us are here from different countries. And some of us come here, accept the Lord here in Canada. Others of us, from wherever we were, we accept the Lord and came to this country as a child of God. But we didn't purchase a ticket when we were coming here to get lost from the Lord. The ticket which we purchased was for an airline. 
And maybe some might still hold on to that ticket as a souvenir. But when you leave your country, when we leave forever we we are, and we leave with Christ in us, he's still the same Christ in us today. It should be. We didn't have a, get a ticket to run away, a fugitive from God, but to stay with him. I remember some years ago, a brother was going to England, and as they had a prayer for him and a farewell service, somebody said to him, Brother, I'm praying for you that you will stay in the will of God. And just remember this, that wherever you are, you represent us. You represent us. When we leave from wherever we were and go to somewhere else, we still represent Christ. Christ. A few weeks ago, or just a few days ago, our prime minister was in California and some other states, some other states, that he was still representing Canada. Canada. Wherever we are, we represent Christ. We are still belonging to him. We are his purchase position. His blood ransomed me. His love lifted me. His banner over me, he said, is love. After all that happened to me, he said, his, my banner over you is love. Hallelujah. That's what I need to feel. That's how I'm encouraging us. That regardless of where we are from or whatever, let's remember his banner over me is love. I must have the Savior with me. I dare not walk alone. I must feel his presence near me and his arms around me thrown, not running from the presence of the Lord. Pastor Brian been teaching a lot in the presence of the Lord, to be in the presence of the Lord, in the will of the Lord. Let's remember we are to be in his presence. Not from his presence. Eve and Adam, they went from the presence of the Lord. Cain went from the presence of the Lord. We're here tonight. We want to be in the presence of the Lord. Why we need to be in the presence of the Lord? For his love lifted me. His love lifted me. And thank God. Souls that were in danger, we can now look above, knowing that Jesus completely, not almost saved me, but completely saved. Completely saved. Do you feel that way tonight? Do you feel that you've been completely saved? Do you want to stay with him? Do you want to talk about him? Praise God. We don't boast about our past life. We don't boast about our past parents, Adam and Eve. But we can boast about Christ. And we can tell the world that love lifted me. Hallelujah. And he put a banner over me. And his banner over me is love. If you feel that you have lost that love tonight. Anyone in our midst tonight feel it? I feel so helpless. I don't feel that love that I ought to feel. Sometimes I feel so cold. Many a times I feel like Adam and Eve hiding. Feel like I'm hiding from the presence of the Lord. So they think. But the Lord know where you are at. The Lord know where you are at. We might leave Vancouver to be here. But what happened there if, it's, if it wasn't forgiven when we get here? It is still not forgiven. But we need to be in the presence of the Lord. If you feel that you have gone that cold and something's wrong, and we need to come closer to the Lord, I'm going to ask us as we stand tonight and think of your life as a child of God and what caused us to feel that love and 
calm spirit within. There's a sweet spirit that dwells within. And it is the presence of the Lord. His love lift you up. If you feel you're getting cold or moving away from that love, could we make it to him? Or could we just move forward and say, pray with me? I don't feel a love. I don't feel that warmth. I don't feel that zeal as I used to have. And I need to get back to the place knowing that his love lift me and he's still telling me that his banner over me is love. Glory to God. Sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despair. when it seems nothing else could help when you were just about ready to run away when you believed that there was no hope and a still small voice tell you fear not I will help you fear not I will be with you is that love gone cold tonight is that love running low or do you feel that we need to come closer to him Can we just really bow our heads and say, Lord, help me to experience that moment of love and joy and peace in my life again. As we sing again quietly, love, 
lifted me. their hand tonight and says I would love to feel this love again rekindled in my life have you gone from his presence have you gone cold do you think a lot of times somebody may keep mentioning when I used to do this I remember a time when I used to do that I remember a time when I was this when I was that the same love of God the same spirit of God that were with you then can be with you today. Have you gone cold tonight? I would love that to have that feeling of joy and love within you. If you're feeling that low tonight, I would love to come and say, pray with me that I will have that feeling of joy within me again. I ask you, is there one who would love to come and say, pray with me? We want to be closer to the Lord. If not, I'm going to ask you to do something with me tonight. We're going to have a concert of prayer. I ask you to call unto the Lord right now and to ask the Lord to help you that that love within you be rekindled and be strong in him. As we hum that song one more time, love lifted me, would you all pray together to the Lord? For his love to be strong in you as never before. Love lifted me. Love lifted me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for such joy. I thank you for such happiness. I'm glad for the blessed assurance we have, Lord, to know that your love can lift anyone from the deepest and darkest dungeon. And I pray that tonight that the spirit of the Lord of heaven, the blessings from heaven, will be upon the heart of your children. Bless everyone tonight that take time out to come, my Lord. I pray that they will be sincere in their spirit, in their worship, in their commitment, in their dedication to you, dear Lord. Lord, let the joy and the peace from heaven fill every heart, fill this place. May there be a fire, O oh God, in this local church, in their community, in their home. May the fire burn within and the glory of God, the righteousness of your peace from heaven shine as never before. We give thanks, Holy Father. Bless, I beseech you again, the leaders of this local church. Remember Pastor John and his dear wife, Pastor Brian and his wife. Even this moment as she is taking care, helping to take care of her father down in the islands. I remember her, I pray, dear Lord. I pray a special blessing. I pray, my Lord, for healing touch upon her father. And I pray for everyone that is here tonight. Give them a, a joyful week. Give them a successful week, dear Lord. As we leave from here tonight, help them to remember the love of God is greater far than tongue or pen can ever tell. Thank you for hearing us tonight. And to God be the glory. We say amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Refreshing. Oh.
God bless you. Please join for refreshment downstairs if you can stay. And may you have a good week. God bless you.